Got it. All right, everybody, welcome to Drupal Camp. And uh, I'm going to preface this is uh, configuration management, uh, local development with config splits. And uh, I will preface my talk with this disclaimer that this might be the worst presentation that you've ever seen. So uh, I was going to um, set up configuration splits on the TC Drupal uh, 2023 website as a live demo. And as I prepared for my task this morning, I'm getting a lot of these messages over here that I cannot connect and push code to the server. Uh -huh. so, um, so as a back up to that, I thought I would try and use, um, instead of Git, I would use SFTP, and I'm also not able to connect to the server. So um, we're not going to get results today, but I will um, go through and talk about config splits and how you can set them up on your site to have different configuration on your local development environment compared to the live site. I have a number of sites that I could show you um, how that works and, uh, and we, can, we can get you some valuable information. If anybody thinks this is a bunch of hoo-ha, you can leave at any time and I will I'll probably buy you a coffee after this. <laughs> so, um, so let's talk about um, config split and config management and um, why that was so amazing for us. So uh, here's the agenda that I was going to do, config splits, and then talk about some modules that we use, and then I was going to do it live. So what is configuration management? Um, that was a new concept that came to us in Drupal 8, so we have it in, in 10 now, 9 and 10, and basically what it does is that it maintains the configuration in the database of the website, but it automatically exposes that configuration as code for us to use for uh, versioning and to actually manage that code. And what that allows us to do is it, it uh, replaces, it allows us to push code to the live site and implement it all in one big batch. Um, and uh, configuration management largely replaced features. Does anybody remember features? And the nightmare that was in, well, it wasn't a nightmare. It was pretty good, but there was a lot of caveats. And they really fixed a lot of that with configuration management. So um, let's take a look at uh, a Drupal website and, um, and how configuration management works. So um, when we think about configuration management, um, it's going to, the settings are going to be in the database with all the module settings. And then we're going to see those settings in configuration files, in YAML files. So here, this is the TC Drupal Camp website. And if we go under configuration, we go down to development, and we go to um, sync config, this will show us a comparison of the configuration that's on the live site with the code that's in the configuration files. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take one step back. Who is, and, and I want to get a sense of where you guys are at, and maybe I can tailor this presentation. Who has used configuration management to create configuration splits? All right. And who is new to this and interested in implementing it on their site? Great. OK. Um, if you guys have any questions, if there's something that seems to be missing, I'll take those questions and maybe maybe we'll push it on a little farther. But um, so this is the, the the camp website, and this is config synchronization. And what we see here is the difference between the configuration files on the site and the configuration that's in the website. And so here. We have our view, which is the session schedule. 
And we have a button here that shows us the differences. And so, <laughs> somewhere in that file, something is enabled and something is n not enabled. All right? We can't really see where it is. Sometimes this is clearer. Here's an example. System action redirect. I installed the redirect module two days ago. And we see that the UUID of this configuration is different from active is the configuration that's on the site and staged is what's on the code itself. Okay? So I'll go and take a look and we'll see. Well, actually, this will be. So here's my directory tc drupal camp and these are the con these are the files for the website and here's my configuration folder and here's all my configuration in there all right so if i go down to views uh, sorry views view system schedule actually i'll look at it right here so this what we're seeing on that config on that synchronization page is that everything lines up. So all these files are all the settings for our Drupal website. This defines everything about our our website. It's all in here. So if we look through this list, you can see there's block configurations in here, there's field configurations, there's entity view modes. So anytime we make a change on the website, it'll be, it'll get, when we export the configuration, it'll get, it'll get written here for us. And then we can commit that code, and now we have a record of it going forward. Whereas if people were on the website and made some changes, they could remake those changes, we wouldn't have any record of that. So, um, So, um, any questions about that? We have configuration on the website, and then we have configuration in the files. And configuration management is a way we can move back and forth between these two things. I'm just going to try this. Hope upon hope. That's probably crazy. For people that came late, I said this will probably be the worst, most unorganized presentation I've ever seen. And you guys could, could leave at any time if you want. And I'll buy you a cup of coffee if you do. So this is, I'm going to go to a different website. This is our Electric Citizen website. And again, I'm going to go to development, config synchronization. And here we see the configuration is identical between the two sites. This is a local version of the website. All right. So let's let's just try some things. We'll go to the system information. We'll go to the overview. I'm just going to change the the system name. I'll change this to front. The ho the default home page, and I'm going to hit save. Okay. Let's see. All right, I saved that. Now if I go back and look at my config synchronization, here we see the differences that I just made in that config. 
All right. So that's that relationship between configuration on the website and configuration management. So um, on this website, we're using modules that allow us to split this configuration. So when, when I showed you the, the other website, there was just that long list of configuration in there. Let's take a look at the configuration that's on that Electric Citizen website. Uh, so here in my config folder, I've set up different um, instances that I'm going to split my configuration. So in this sync folder is everything that's common to the website. This is all the configuration that all the different environments will share. And now I've created um, test. Uh, dev, I have a local instance, I have a dev instance, I have a test instance, and a production instance. Do people use that workflow where you where you push it? This is really, you know, Pantheon makes us really stick to this, um, but it allows us to test um, on a on a real production server um, our site. So, in each of these environments, now I have configuration that affects just this local website. So we see we're going to have some admin toolbar settings. I'm going to turn on stage file proxy. I'm going to change the system performance of the website. I'm going to turn on the update module. And I'm going to turn on the upgrade status module. Okay. <coughs> on the dev site, I'm going to turn on um, devel, database logging, admin toolbar, update status, and views watchdog, all right? On the live site, I'm going to change the system performance. So this will be different than the other websites, all right? So this is what this is how our, our configuration will end up once we have these config splits. So let's take a look at <coughs> setting up configuration splits. Um, we're going to enable a number of modules to do that. Um, So here are really the action modules that we're using. Config filter allows other modules to interact with config storage. Config ignore allows us to ignore certain configuration and config split. All right. So when we enable these modules on the website, we get configuration split settings. So just like you saw in those folders, here are my different environments, and these are going to, this is where we're going to make the changes that will develop these config splits. So let's take a look at this local instance. Now this interface is pretty, it's a little rough because we set up our local environment we give it a description. We're going to save the changes in a folder. And here's where I defined that folder in the config folder under local. And <coughs> now here's where we tell the website what we want to split. So here we have admin toolbar. 
and all your modules on your website are going to be in this long list. And so there's config, there's stage file proxy, update manager, upgrade status. It's a little unwieldy, this kind of big list like that. But we're going to completely split these modules, and that means that all the configuration for that module will get set up in local and not in the live configuration, the, the, the general configuration file. We can also do specific items. And so in this list, you'll see all the items that are in each of the configuration files. So if I go down this list, one that we do a lot is system performance. Yeah, so here we could change the system performance. And that would be when we don't care about the other system settings, but we want to change the system performance, especially when we're working locally from our live site to our, to our dev site, to our local site. Uh, we can also do partial splits. And by partial splits, we can have uh, some of the configuration in the live in the, in the general bucket, but then part of it in each local environment. Question? Yep. Can you stack these things? Can you like, have a local thing up here and then yes. have to test and then both reference that? Yes, we can. So one that we typically set up is that we'll set up uh, like a host environment. And then that would affect the dev site, the test site, and the live site, but not the local site. So um, when you're setting up your config splits, you want to think about what do I want to have running where? And then create those different instances and enable and disable modules in each of those different parts. All right? Um, OK. Let's. This is the UI for configuration splits. Let's take a look at the configuration file that gets created by configuration splits, if that makes sense. So configuration splits will run on all your environments. So it's going to be in the main configuration folder. Um, So here's my electric citizen site. Here's my different, again, we're just looking at files here. This is a editor. And we're going to look in the sync folder. And this is where our configuration file for configuration splits is, if that makes sense, right? These are the settings for configuration splits, which is a file. So here, we'll look at that local instance. So this. Configuration has a UUID, we have a description, and now here we have modules. And so this says, turn on dblog module, deval, deval generate, stage file proxy, uh, web form, dev. All right? So those modules will be enabled when my local split is active, all right? Um, then you have your complete list, you have your partial, so here system performance, I'm going to change that, and system logging, I'm going to change that, all right? What you'll also see in this list is there's no setting for stage file proxy here. because this configuration is going to only be in that local folder. OK? All right. Um, how many people have worked with like edited real configuration files and then used that to import? Yeah. So this interchange goes both ways. You can change the settings of your website 
and then export the configuration to the files, or you can change the files and import the settings into the website. All right? Um, okay, let's... Where should we go from here? Um, all right. When we go back to the website and we take a look at our synchronization, uh, that's TCDC. So the question here is, how do we know what environment we're on? Where to go now? Oh, I'm on the wrong site. Sorry, sorry. Of course, we're not going to get the right result there. Config splits is set up on the Electric Citizen website. So it's going to warn us that if we do a config import, all these things might have been changed. So how do we know that we're on the local website to apply the configuration split? And so we see here that this gives us a message, use config split configuration for local. So I'm on my local site, but how does it know that? We do that with environmental variables. And this might be the, uh, this is sort of the magic sauce that makes all this happen. So on this EC website, we're going to go and in the settings files, so I'm on, in the web folder, I'm on, uh, can you guys see that okay? Sites default, I'm going to my settings file. <clears throat> and to make config split work, we need to tell each instance of your website where it's running, where it's running. So in my settings file, I set up here we say where the config sync directory is. So this is the overall config folder for the whole project. But here we set up config splits. And so here's your PHP. If the PHP, if, if the environmental variable PHP or a Pantheon environment is set, then we're going to change our temporary path. We're going to do a switch statement. Everybody familiar with a little PHP? So if we're on the live site, we're going to set this configuration variable to true. That means we're going to be on the live site. The other case is if this environment variable is test, we're going to set this variable, config split test, to true. And if we're on Default, it'll go to dev. It'll go to the dev site setting. Or if this enver environment variable isn't set, we're going to set it that local is true. And on our local site, we see that that's, that's correct. All right? Uh, let's do this. I'm going to log into the live site. How many people use Drush? Yeah. No need to remember passwords. So I have a little shorthand. I'm using Drush 10. I'm using the 
the alias for the live site, and I'm going to log in. Pantheon conspiring against me. They were doing it all day yesterday, too. They had a rough day. Yeah. They had a couple of rough days this yeah. week. I'm trying to log into a different website. There we go. Okay. This is a different Drupal 10 website. But I have config split set up on here. And I'm going to go to my config. So you can see my config is synced between my code and my site. And now here on this site, it says I'm using the prod configuration okay so this this will show when it's uh, which environment that you're pointing to so let's just go back to that code so we're setting the configuration that specific item in this settings file so that now we know exactly what those are I'll also show you that when you're setting up your configuration, uh, dev config split settings. There's a checkbox here that says status. And that's what we're setting in that long setting file. We usually leave these off and we let that settings file set up which, which environment that we're on. All right. And you can see they give us some notes about if we want to change this with our settings file, here's the, the configuration, uh, the PHP that we need to use to set that up. Okay, um, so I'm using a lot of short codes here, I know, but um, um, do, peop do people use um, bash aliases? set up commands that you run a lot. So SSHE says use my electric citizen. Um, it, it logs me out of my our, uh, SSH ID, uses my business one, and then SSHW uses my personal one. So anyway, um, OK. Um, how are we doing so far? People getting an understanding of how we're using config splits. Any questions? What's not clear? Yeah. Well, so without um, modifying your uh, settings.php, you would go in and just switch on active for which split in, in which environment you're going to be in. Yep. Does it automatically um, deactivate the other splits? Yes. Okay. As long as you don't set it in settings.php. Right. Okay. That'll that'll overwrite overwrite whatever UI settings that you use. And if you want to overwrite it, um, you manually uh, put that code in settings.php. It's a split. It's not creating code for you that um, you inject in there. You have to manually put it in. Say that again. So I would have to cut and paste that phrase and put it in settings.php. The module is not doing that. For 
for me um, if I want to override in settings.php here? I think, I think I know the answer to my question. The answer is okay. yes, right? I already have that. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> okay. You can so, modify your files, it won't do it for yeah, okay. you. Okay. That's a good thing. <laughs> right. Yep. So, Pantheon gives us environmental variable to do that. Um, I have, personally, I have a bunch of um, websites that I use that are on shared hosting. Um, I started as a, as a do-it-yourself guy, and that's, that's the cheap way to do it, right? So, so let's look at, we just logged into that um, Mark Ditlifson site, and um, in that site, we have config splits enabled, and I have just a local production and sync folders over here. You can see that. And so with Mark's site, it's not on Pantheon, and it's not on Acquia. They also give you environmental variables that are clearly defined. So I needed to figure out how can I turn on and off configuration splits. So um, I just went into my uh, PHP toolbox, and I'm like, what could I test in my settings file that I would know which environment that I'm on? And so for this site, I came up with the IP address from my hosting so I check if the server address is set to my IP address of my server, then I know that I'm on my production website. And so I can turn that on. And if not, then I'm just going to assume I'm on my local website. So this is my testing to see if my config sync is on and then changing that in vari environmental variable. Yeah. Are all these sites separate? Are they in like a multi-site kind of a thing? Or? All, yeah, I gave up on that. You have one main code base and then you have multi-sites? No. Nope. Nope. Well, he doesn't. Okay. I don't. I don't, yeah. Um, so let's think about that. If we were on a multi-dev, can anybody think of a test we could use to tell if we were on production or dev? I guess th this IP address works. Remember, this is only working on this website. It doesn't care if it's... All my settings for this website are going to be separate from all your multi-dev, your other multi-dev sites. So even if you had a shared IP address, you could still do this test because this is only running when I'm bootstrapping this website. Yeah. Could you use the domain mm -hmm. uh, the check? If you had multi-site, so you'd have a bunch of different domains associated, so could you use the domain to check? I don't know the answer to that. Um, I came up with this because I looked at those server variables and I'm like, what in here is unique that I know that I could get that? Mm -hmm. Let me look. I'll check another site here. I think you could only do that if you're running your import via the web UI. The Josh Josh doesn't have potentially doesn't know what domain you're running the site through. Mm -hmm. Right. <coughs> Uh, well, except that isn't uh, this is independent of the import process, right? It's essentially loading all the files, but it's saying like because I'm currently on this domain, I'm going to check this folder or something using this the settings, file, right? I mean, you're syncing all of that code in your repo. It's the settings file saying, well, I'm currently located in this location, therefore I'm going to check this folder. 
that acts on the import or the export of that configuration. Otherwise, models don't get enabled or disabled, or config doesn't get added or removed. Mm -hmm. So you, it does rely on the same thing. Yeah. And this file is run before the, you know, as the site is bootstrapping. Yeah. So it's like, okay, where am I? What am I doing? What what configuration am I going to use? Um, I don't remember, but I thought at one point I had tr I had set that up to look for a folder um, in the in the project on the server to see if this if this folder existed. Could I do that? Um, just like Pantheon sets up an environmental variable, you could also set up an environmental variable on your server that would be available for you to, to pick up and, and do that test to see which server that you're on. Is there a reason you did it that way around and not, not like default to like production and, and do something like, you know, if I'm on my Doxel site or my DDEV site or something, like then use local settings but default to prod or something? Is there? Um, when you turn on your debugger and put it in at this point, mm -hmm. you really just, the server is just there starting up. Mm -hmm. And so you have some file folders and you have environmental variables and server variables. That, that's really all you have so far. Mm -hmm. And so you have, to, you have to get a hold of something at that level to be able to check that. Do you want to fail to prod? I guess what I'm saying is, like, if prod is your more, like, locked down code or whatever, or settings, like you're not, like, debugging everything to screen or something like that, I'd rather fail to that than fail to, hey, I'll put everything to the screen. <laughs> something like that, right? Yeah. I'd rather kind of fail that way and then figure out, why isn't my local telling me anything? Oh, it's because it's pretending like it's safe. <laughs> right? Another thing about this is that um, this is just setting up config splits to work. And config splits is really all about uh, your development environment. Mm -hmm. So um, it's not, it, it's giving you information about where you're at so that you can do config importing, exporting. Um, but it's not running on production. So, in that sense, you're not, if you get this wrong, your site's still going to run. You're not, you're not breaking the, the site, right? So, whereas if you're trying to set um, database settings, you have to make sure that's right or the mm -hmm. production site isn't going to run. So, okay. Um, Let's see, what else, what else can I answer? Um, let's take a look at, I'm going to have to remember this. Uh, I had a list of those modules that we were working on. Config split, config ignore. I don't, I don't know even what config filter does, but it's just in the... It's an API for the other ones. Oh, I see. Okay, great. There's another module, and that is config split ignore. And uh, there's a specific use case for this module that um, we just have been implementing on our sites. And that's with the XML sitemap module. So we want that to run on the live site. And um, we don't want it to run on dev or test. So the problem with um, XML sitemap is that you want to ignore some of the, of the configuration in that module because it's going to write, uh, here, let, me, let me see if I can.
So let's look at our config. We'll look at the default. I know it's not set up here yet. Oh, no XML site there. So with XML sitemap, it creates a hashtag and This hashtag so as content is created the XML sitemap can change. So that's part of configuration that we want to leave to users about what content types and what content is more important or less important. Remember XML sitemap creates an XML sitemap and then submits that, that to Google so that they know what pages are on our website. And we can give those, those um, we can set priorities about which pages are more or less important on our website and give that to them in the XML sitemap. And we want to give users the ability to change that and say, hey, this event is really important or this, what, whatever that is. So we ignore the XML sitemap files because we want the user to do that. And so when we only want to run XML sitemap on the live site, we want to be able to s split that and ignore it on, the, on each instance. Because we don't want the dev site or the test site submitting an XML sitemap when we run cron there and submitting that to Google. And so config split ignore, ignore allows us to do that. Whereas if you try, you can't ignore configuration that's not there. So if you split it, you can't ignore it. But with config split ignore, you can split that settings and ignore it. Is there a list of uh, things that you don't want to do so that you can have a kind of a checklist? I don't want to do this, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do this. Um, That's a good example that you did, but how many more other ones are there, right? Mm -hmm. um, let's have a discussion about that. So um, what are things that if other people have split things? What are things that they split? Send grid. Send grid, we don't want. Well, this is ignoring. We don't, we don't want to put that settings file in the code. And we don't want to commit that. So that only sit, lives on the live site. Um, Stage file proxy, we only want that to run locally. Update module, which tells us about what updates are available. We, we don't, I mean, uh, I'm a support person at Electric Citizen, and we are always watching when there's security updates for our clients. And so we don't need them to see when security updates are available. So we only turn that on locally when we need it. Um, upgrade status module as we've been upgrading to, to D10 from D9. We run that on our local sites. Um, what else? Um, when we work with uh, the University of Minnesota, they're on Acquia, and we turn off all their Acquia caching yeah. and purge modules because 
those can run on the on the dev test live site, but we don't need those to run on local. So we turn all those off. And um, what else? Can you do something like within what might otherwise be just like a single config file? Like for example, I'm thinking of ECA rules where you know we want to be able to like have a, a, an action that triggers an email to all site moderators or something like that. But for testing, we don't want it to go to that those actual moderators. We might want it to go to a different group of users, and that's maybe just one little like word in a config file somewhere to yeah. say like which variable we want to pass to this view or something. Yeah, that's a great question, and let's look at this. TC Drupal website because that has. Uh, do you use EVA module? No. ECA? E ECA. ECA. Sorry. Yeah. Yep. Oh boy. Yeah, it, it has a whole bunch of, of things to look through, but. Well, it's giving, it looks like it's giving a machine name. To it's, each. Yeah, each model has a machine name, <laughs> which, yeah. It's not, not not easily readable. <laughs> Super not friendly. Nope. So let's take a look at this. Um, here you go. Oh yeah. Wow, this will be tricky. Uh huh. This is a YAML file, yep. and you can. You know, read down from this yep. and find out where your environmental variable or where your yep. settings are. And then using that syntax that we looked at before, the, yep. the array, that array can show you where you could turn these on and off or ignore them or change them. Where um, would you put that? On a, um, you would do uh, in the config split file. We would. Oh, sorry. In our config splits. Here's our. There's a partial list. And so here we have system.performance. Mm -hmm. So that would change that variable. System.performance and system logging. So everything in that file is the same except that particular item itself. So if we go down and look at So we could actually go system logging and then error level mm -hmm. and ignore that. And that would be split out differently. Um, let's see. About 10 minutes. Other questions? So once you have this all set up, yep. and say I now need to add a new module in that configuration, how do I go about doing that? Uh, two ways. One is you can make the changes in your config files and then put it in. Um, a lot of times modules will add their own system files. so. Um, generally, the way I do it is um, on your local instance, you'll enable that module. It'll assume that it's for everything, and it'll put its, it'll add that as an enabled module in core extensions, and it'll add your configuration file when you do your configuration export. The next step you would take that export file, um, that, that settings file, and um, take that 
you would put that in the folder of your local or, or uh, whatever configuration split you want to use out of the general folder into that instance and then you would add that module name from core extensions into your uh, config split file then import that and it would set up and now you would have that set up on your local should I, should I show people what that looks like that might be hard to explain so Oz is asking, if I add a new module to my website, and I want to have that split. So I'd enable the module, and under the config setting core extensions, the file name would get added here. And it would, it would have a, a zero that this would be enabled, OK? It might also create a settings file. So, example settings file. Let's see what we have here. Admin toolbar. Let's say we added the admin toolbar. Now that's available for all the different environments. But I want to change that so it's only going to be on my local. So I take admin toolbar out of this core extensions. All right, I go to my config splits local. I'm going to say completely split admin toolbar that it's just local. All right, let's see here. Now I'll take my, let's move in config, sync, admin toolbar, and I'll move it to config local. All right. Now I'll do fin drush config import Oh, there's actually no changes because admin toolbar is going to be on my local machine and that's exactly right the settings are there it's enabled there but on my live site it's not going to be turned off great question okay any other questions I apologize for maybe one of the worst presentations ever um, so uh, if you want to talk more about config splits, if this is something interesting, come to the um, unconference sessions. And we can add that as a topic if you want. Um, don't forget about config uh, the the unconference this afternoon with things that we get to talk about. What what you guys want to bring to the discussion? Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.